This is from the book, The Greek Gods, by Efslin, Efslin, and Hoops. This section is called Zeus, the Pantheon. Kronos, father of the gods who gave his name to time, married his sister Rhea, goddess of earth. Now Kronos had become king of the gods by killing his father, Oronos, the first one, and the dying Oronos had prophesied, saying, You murder me now and steal my throne, but one of your own sons will dethrone you, for crimes beget crime. So Kronos was very careful. One by one, he swallowed his children as they were born. First, three daughters, Hestia, Demeter, and Hera, then two sons, Hades and Poseidon. One by one, he swallowed them all. Rhea was furious. She was determined that he should not eat her next child, who she felt sure would be a son. And when her time came, she crept down the slope of Olympus to a dark place to have her baby. It was a son, and she named him Zeus. She hung a golden cradle from the branches of an olive tree and put him to sleep there. Then she went back to the top of the mountain. She took a rock and wrapped it in swaddling clothes and held it to her breast, humming a lullaby. Kronos came snorting and bellowing out of his great bed, snatched the bundle from her and swallowed it, clothing and all. Rhea stole down the mountainside to the swinging golden cradle and took her son down into the fields. She gave him to a shepherd family to raise, promising that their sheep would never be eaten by wolves. Here, Zeus grew to be a beautiful young boy, and Kronos, his father, knew nothing about him. Finally, however, Rhea became lonely for him and brought him back to the court of the gods, introducing him to Kronos as the new cupbearer. Kronos was pleased because of the boy was beautiful. One night, Rhea and Zeus prepared a special drink. They mixed mustard and salt with the nectar. Next morning, after a mighty swallow, Kronos vomited up first a stone and then Hestia, Demeter, Hera, Hades, and Poseidon, who, being gods, were still undigested, still alive. They thanked Zeus and immediately chose him to be their leader. Then a mighty, mighty battle raged. Kronos was joined by the Titans, his half-brothers, huge, twisted, dark creatures, taller than trees, whom he kept pent up in the mountains until there was fighting to be done. They attacked the young gods furiously, but Zeus had allies too. He had gone to darker caverns, caves under caves under caves, deep in the mountainside, formed by the first bubbles of the cooling earth. Here, Kronos... Thousands of centuries before, a short time in the life of a god, had pent up other monsters, the one-eyed cyclops and the hundred-handed ones. Zeus unshackled these ugly cousins and led them against the titans. There was a great rushing and tumult in the skies, and the people on earth heard mighty thunder and saw mountains shatter. The earth quaked and tidal waves rolled as the gods fought. The titans were tall as trees and old Kronos was a crafty leader. He attacked fiercely, driving the young gods before him. But Zeus had laid a trap. Halfway up the slope of Olympus, he whistled for his cousins, the hundred-handed ones who had been lying in ambush. They took up huge boulders, a hundred each, and hurled them downhill at the Titans. The Titans thought the mountains itself was falling on them. They broke ranks and fled. The young goat god Pan was shouting with joy, Later, he said that it was his shout that made the Titans flee. That is where we get the word panic. Now the young gods climbed to Olympus, took over the castle, and Zeus became their king. No one knows what happened to Kronos and his Titans, but sometimes mountains still explode in fire and the earth still quakes, and no one knows exactly why. One story says that Zeus had killed Kronos with a scythe, the same one that Kronos had used on Oranos. Perhaps this is a real meaning behind the greeting card pictures we exchange on New Year's Day. A rosy little baby confronting an old man who carries a scythe. Memories of the old gods crop up in odd places. And that is the end of the story about Zeus.